Hello, everybody, and welcome to Secret Wars TLDR. I'm Sal. I'm Ben. And I'm Tiffany. We're your war correspondents for the week of August 5th. The tie-ins that came out this week were numerous, plentiful, and epic. Uh, I guess they were biding their time with the amount of tie-ins that were coming out last week, um, which you can see, of course, uh, from our last episode of Secret Wars TLDR. The books I read this week, and I wrote them all down, <clears throat> were Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows, number three, Guardians of Nowhere, number two, Spider Island, number two, Ultimate End number four, Civil War number two, and Red Skull number two. I wanted to get into Future Imperfect, but I was just too far behind. I did Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows number three, uh, written, of course, by Dan Slott with art by Adam Kubert. This is a continuation of the Spider-Man Mary Jane, what if they never got unmarried by magic story, uh, and it makes no attempt to reference any of those things. It's just an adventure, a merry old adventure, kind of 90s-tastic of Spider-Man and Mary Jane. What if... It's basically a what-if book, because, like, the art choices by Adam Kubert continue to baffle and frustrate longtime fans, because for no reason whatsoever, Kubert decides to, like, change essential and obvious costume designs. Slot does a nice job with the characters, but the art just completely frustrates people, uh, from what I've noticed online as well as just from my own personal viewing. Um, by the way, the art uh, with the rendering of the characters, everybody looks fine, consistent. Uh, Kubert's not at the top of his game, but he's still doing an admirable job uh, rendering a million different things and showing you, uh, like, a 90s-tastic New York with, like, lots of, you know, the way that you saw Spider-Man, like, 20 years ago with all the brownstones and, you okay. know, just everyone like, in the parks and stuff. Like, it's just something that I remember from old-school Spider-Man. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the tone it's trying to capture. The villain is interchangeable, and who cares? He's basically like Spider-Man's apocalypse, um, which is like, oh, finally we get an apocalypse uh, archetype for Spider-Man. Because that's what he needs. He needs, yeah, an all-powerful character that really, really cares about him, so he's probably some character from his past. Oh. Uh, yeah. And we still haven't found out who that is. It's Uncle Ben. It's Uncle Ben. <laughs> Uncle Ben is a power cipher. He's like, what the hell, you let me die! Yeah, and like, what's weird is that, you know, originally the idea was that all the superheroes were dying and being like stripped of their powers but now we're getting this idea that maybe their powers are not gone forever and maybe they're not dead because there's this chamber that he has full of superheroes annie parker is still cute and fun uh we're treated to a weird uh, interaction between her and mary jane her mother uh when mary jane kind of establishes like this is who your dad was he was spider-man that was a big deal and like you know your dad's a hero and Annie is like, did he ever lose? And there's this, like, image of Captain Stacy dying, Gwen Stacy dying, Uncle Ben dying, and, like, and she just says, no, he never lost. And you're like, is that good or not? The kid's nine, so I guess it's kind of, like, a sweet little, like, your father is immortal and can't lose, but it also kind of, like, hurts the whole point of Spider-Man, which is that, like, he's a character defined by loss, and in spite of his losses, he still triumphs. That's, like, kind of the whole thing. Persistence in a way. Yeah, his, his, his indomitable persistence. Um, but maybe that's too heavy a lesson for a nine-year-old, so... <laughs> wasn't too heavy for me when I was nine reading Spider-Man, but he wasn't my dad, so I'll give it a pass. That said, uh, the story continues to drag along. I think it ends in the next one. If it doesn't, then it's one issue too long. And uh, so there you go, Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. It has nothing to do with Secret Wars, it has nothing to do with the tie-ins, it has nothing to do with the main event. Uh, the whole world will be undone and forgotten in like a year. So, there you go. Okay. It's too bad. Like, Aww. there's some neat ideas, but it's not enough. It's not enough to play with, it's not enough to grow from. It is, however, selling like gangbusters. So Really? Yeah, so somebody gives a shit about this book. I also enjoy it, and I also buy it, so. No, but that's good. But it is good, because it's telling, I think it's sending a message. Like, we want this. Marvel does not care. I'm sure Marvel's begrudgingly accepting that. They're, they're begrudgingly taking their money. <laughs> but they're not begrudgingly, like, telling editorial to do anything with that. No. Well, it's not going to become a book or anything. Nor is it going to be, like, the status quo. They're not going to change that. They're not going to change that. It took them, like, 30 years to get to the point where they could change it. They're not going to change it now. The next book I did was Civil War uh, number 2. This is another big book people were looking forward to, so if you're going to get into that. Uh, this one had art by Lionel Yu, with uh, writing by Charles Soule. Cap and Iron Man have, have split the country, but, like, it's Battle World, so, like, how big is the country anyway? I, I don't have any idea how big these realms are. Like, like it can't be the whole U.S. Right, it can't, clearly. but, like, it is? That makes no sense. No, it. I don't know. Anyway, it's like, what if the Civil War never ended? And so as a result, you have this, like, 
future utopia that Stark is in charge of. Of course, he's Baron of this realm, of this battle world. Okay. Or of this country in battle world or whatever. And uh, Cap is in charge of the blue, which is, like, the wasteland. Okay. Um, you know how, like, in the original Civil War, you had Cap and Iron Man. Obviously, Iron Man was the bad guy. Like, despite the fact that, like, Iron Man's policies made sense. Iron Man was clearly the bad guy. Right. Yeah, because he was rounding on mutants. Or, and, and power people in general. And, like, you know, putting them in prison in, like, another dimension. Right. Yeah, if they didn't go and, along like, with this. And, like, enlisting thing. monsters to help him in his quest. Like, it was, clearly he was the bad guy. Cap was the good guy. That was clearly the point of Civil War. I know that, like, people will say, oh, no, he was written like a friggin' Snidely Whiplash mustache twirling villain. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> in this, Captain America is totally irresponsible. Because, like, he's just, like, playing in the woods with his friends. Like, that, like, Stark has, <laughs> Stark is given authority, and he's given, like, authorship of this realm, and he's, like, feed, feeding people, and, like, clothing them, and giving them, like, everything they need. He's just, he's, he's running it like a country. And Cap is like, if you have powers, you deserve to have them. And, like, there's a character in the first issue that's, like, discovering she can shoot, like, explosions. Or whatever, make explosions from far away. She's using her fingers to do it, and uh, she blows up like Monument Valley. And one of Cap's agents, I think it's Stature, says something like, "You know, like, hey, good job. Like, keep it up. You know, you got powers. You live in the blue. You're good to go." And it's like, well, did she just destroy this beautiful thing that's naturally occurring? Like, yeah, but who cares? It'd be like, you know, I have the I, like, I have the ability just to grow, and I filled in the Grand Canyon. Like, oh, good for you. Like, fuck you. That's horrible. Like, what? It's totally irresponsible. It's really dumb. Uh, well, also, they're fucking up America so that, you know, Iron Man gets really upset. Right, exactly. Except he doesn't care because he doesn't live anywhere near there. And also, like, Iron Man's all techno-whatever anyway. So it's like, oh, naturally occurring rocks. Who cares about that? I can make rocks ten times better than yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mother Nature has a, nothing on rocks, okay? I can make a crazy rock that'll also do your taxes, <laughs> your feet. Trust me. It, it, you know what? Like, who killed Miriam Sharp? And they're trying to figure it out. And, like, both sides are being played against each other, just like they were in the prelude to this book. Um... Spider-Man uh, was r interesting in the first issue. He's being written completely out of character in this one, which is kind of weird. Oh. Um, in the first one, he was like, Cap, like, I'm your... Like, he understandably is Captain America's, like, right-hand man, and he's like... Right, and his family's on the other his side. His family's on the other side, right. and he's, like, got this, like, this torn nature. In this, he's like, we have to declare war on Stark. Like, we gotta go. We gotta... Like, he's so quick to fight and so quick to attack people, and it's like, that's not who he is, and it wasn't who he was before Civil War. He was already established, like, as a personality... No, it's really weird. That said, uh, the designs are cool, and the art's really great. Miller really, like, wrote these characters just to serve as an agenda, whatever. This book is at least, at least there's some, like, interesting stuff going on. Like, we have two different societies. Right. That's kind of neat. That said, that's, like, all there is that's neat. There's some character work, you know, Stark and She-Hulk and stuff, but otherwise it's like, all right. Like, if you're in, if you want to see these, if you want to see two noble long-standing adult male characters uh, played against each other like fools, like children, um, then you should definitely read this book because that's what's happening. And people say that I hate everything and that I have no patience or anything like that. The reality is the book was cool and it was fun and it's a cool ride, but like when you go back and you think about it again, for me, I was like, I've seen this already. Like, I feel like I've done this before. Like, it just, it did, like, it didn't resonate with me. It didn't stick with me. But that's just my opinion and I appreciate, like, if you really dug it, you should definitely go out and, like, pick it up, especially if you really, really like the world building that's going on. Because that's something that I gotta give it to Soul. Soul knows how to world build, he knows how to play with these characters, he knows how to do interesting things. I am intrigued about what's gonna happen next. Because it's really, it's all building towards something. It's gonna build toward like a big explosion. <laughs> Maybe what it's building towards is discovering that um, this is all a dream. And that nobody killed Miriam Shaw. Right. Uh, the next book I read <laughs> was Ultimate End Number 4, written of course by Brian Michael Bendis, with art by Mark Bagley. This can continues to baffle and confound me. <laughs> We're finally getting towards Secret Wars. I'm just imagining your quote on the back of each issue. Yeah. This continues to confound and baffle me. <laughs> confound. <laughs> Why do we put this on the cover? Yeah, they should put it on the cover. Because it's... I think that is the prevailing opinion of this book. Is Everyone is like, this book is garbage. I hate this book. It doesn't make any sense. And that's the nicest one so far. And this is the one... Uh, like, at least I didn't say it was bad. I just said it blows my mind. <laughs> We're finally getting it tied in with Secret Wars. Doom appears, and Valeria's in it. Oh, yeah. And basically, the whole thing is that um, 
The Ultimate Universe and 616 Universe are so incompatible, but Doom put them all on one island and made them deal with each other. And they don't know that they're, like, in a realm, or they do. I don't know. It's confounding. And the two Iron Men are working together to try and, like, get themselves out. But, but I thought... Oh, okay, never mind. But the mm-hmm. but Doom and the Thors are like, you can't leave. You have to stay here. But 616 and, and uh, Ultimate are like, no, if we stay together, the world will end. Like, they'll be... Go- like, we're too incompatible or something. And so they're working together to try to solve the problem. And then Bendis realized he was on issue four, nothing happened, so now they hate each other and they have to fight. Like, literally, the two Iron Mans are working together, and then out of nowhere, they disagree, and then the next page is like, both sides have everyone from their respective universes and they're going to fight. But don't worry, because now it's also going to be Punisher kills the Marvel Universe, because Ultimate Punisher has decided that superheroes are the problem, and so he showed up with like a sniper rifle, and he's got all the superheroes under his like crosshairs so it, it's so many things Wait, at whoa, once whoa, whoa, whoa. no Wait. no, no. It, i can't whoa because the reality is it's so many things at once it's so many things that don't work together that nothing is accomplished it's just such a disaster i think what you missed was the page where somebody shouted moral combat yeah it's based it's not even a fighting <laughs> game it's not even a fighting game because the first three issues are people talking to each other. No, I meant you missed that page. There was a page in between. Oh, right. Where was like, a yeah, secret page. Sh- yeah, where Shang-Chi was like, Mortal Kombat! And they were like, oh! Oh! But And then they fight. It's such a disaster, this book. And Mark Bagley is like the architect of the Ultimate Universe because he and Bendis built this universe together with Ultimate Spider-Man. This is besmirching everything that that was because we're seeing... Because it doesn't work. Bagley's art does not fit the tone of this book. But it's okay, because no one's art would fit the tone of this book, because this book is toneless. <laughs> there is no cohesion. There is nothing that makes sense in this book. Everyone is written so bizarrely, and so many things are happening because either contrivances or no explanation whatsoever that you're just like, what is happening? It, it's like we're in a dream. It's like having a dream. You know, where, like, you're, you're like one plot's going, and then you, and you're you talking to people, but they're not your people, but you know them by name, and then you slip into another thing, you're at a water park, and then you're at a, like, mausoleum, and it makes perfect sense when you've thought of it the time when you're unconscious, but then when you write it all down in your dream journal, you're like, what the fuck is this? That's what this is. That sounds like a dream to some. A nightmare to others! Sex Merlin. <laughs> also, 616 Punisher is, like, killed by... Ultimate Punisher? No. That's not how he went out in, in Secret Wars. No. But he does in this. Because that's the thing. Is that 616? Yeah, no, that, that like, no. That ended too. But, but Doom created 616 counterparts. And put them in a battle world. Or maybe they didn't. It's, it's just so bad. The other book I did was Guardians of Nowhere, number two. Which is also written by Bendis, but drawn by Mike Deodano Jr., Clearly, Bendis is enjoying this book because it's cool and fun. Um, also, there aren't a zillion characters in it. Uh, picking up from the last issue, they invented a character named Yoatat. Who cares? Yeah. And Yoatat's like a big guy. <laughs> they're all just big guys, and they're like, I'm gonna beat you because I wanna run this. Fine. So the Guardians fight Yoatat. We also have, like, a backstory for Yoatat. I don't know why, because it's not like Yoatat's going to make it out of Secret Wars. And if he does, like, Bendis will use him and that'll be it. Uh, So we get a backstory for Yoatat, which is like, oh, this is how he became this big, powerful guy. And then uh, Yoatat destroys the underworld in nowhere. And everyone's like, and and Rocket's like, yay? (laughs) And then Yoatat's like, yeah, yay, because, like, uh, they were a real pain in the ass, and also I want to run this place. And Rocket's like, oh, see, now that's the problem. <laughs> so then Rocket and Yoatat fight, and then uh, uh, the Nova Corps can't beat Yoatat. Like, Yoatat can't be beaten. I guess that's the point of the story. So Yoatat is, like, too OP. And Yoatat is, like, testing his metal. Like, Drax the Destroyer shows up, and he's like, oh, man, Drax, like, if I beat you, then I'll be the guy who beat Drax. And uh, so Drax and, and Yoatai fight. And like 50 rep points. Exactly. Cool. And uh, and then a really cool version of the Guardians of the Galaxy show up <laughs> that is not the Guardians you've seen before. Oh. Um, this one is like Iron Man and Venom and 
Captain Marvel. Like, are these all okay. the people Moon who have gone on a, like adventures with the Guardians? Yes, these are all uh, people who have been at one point or another a Guardian of the Galaxy. Oh, thank God! I thought it was just alternate versions of the Guardians of the Galaxy. No, no, no. It's not like you know, like Rocket if he were a dude. No, <laughs> like, but like we know, Venom has. We know Iron Man has. Yep. I don't yeah. Know about Moon Captain Dragon. Marvel, Moon Dragon. Yeah. Okay. Mantis. It, it's a cool team. It's something where it's like, oh, that's neat. Uh, and they fight Yoatat, and uh, basically just. You know, it's a big fight against Yotat, and then because the issue, because the series isn't over, you know, Yotat isn't beaten, but he will be in the next issue. So, you should check it out. It's cool. It's a fun book. Looks great. Awesome art. Neat. Um, cool story. Bendis knows what he's doing with that, and he really clearly, like, is having a better time with this than Ultimate End. With this, it's like, oh, here's a story with a big middle and end and characters. Like, oh, right. Like, what? Oh, I remember what story structure is. Yeah. Oh, ooh. yeah. Ooh. You know what? I'm just going to put that... But yeah, uh, Guardians of Nowhere is cool, and it's fun, and it's Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, it's much more Guardians. I said it in the last issue, but it's like, it's more Guardians than Bendis' Guardians have been. Okay. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. People who like Dan Abnett's run on Guardians are like, where are my Guardians? They're here. <laughs> they're, in this, they're, they're in this celestial head. Neat. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so the other book I did, there's two more left. Okay. Red Skull Number 2 by Joshua Williamson with art by Luca Pizzari. This is great. That's because it's Williamson. Yeah. The last issue was like a wild bunch. This issue is like, what if Red Skull and Magneto had to f fight a nihilist? It's friggin' nuts and awesome. It's really cool. <laughs> and their plan <laughs> is sweet. Not gonna spoil anything. Go buy it. It looks great. It's written terrifically. Red Skull is cool. It's hard to say that, because it's a Nazi, so you're yeah. like, oh, I'm like, Nazi, they are cool. Thought it was awesome, it's great, go get Red Skull. Okay. The other book I did was Spider Island. That's like Island. the last time we're ever going to hear you say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the other title I did was uh, Spider Island number two, which was written by Christos Gage with art by Paco Diaz. Uh, there's also a backup by DeFalco and Ron Friends and Sal Bashema, uh, which is about Spider Girl. And uh, Spider Island is about... Flash Thompson in a world where, like, the Queen took over and made everyone into spider people. Right. And if you remember in the last issue, he turned all of his friends into, like, monsters. Right. Like, Spider-Man villain monsters. Yes. He continues to do that in this issue, and then Captain Wolf America is like, you have to be in charge, and Flash Thompson's like, bully. And so it's cool and fun. There's a few breakout moments that are awesome, but the one that really tops it all is that uh, Iron Man is persistent and won't give up and won't, like, stop. And so, Flash sprays the goblin serum in his face and turns him into the Green Goblin. But, like, a Tony Stark with the goblin serum Green Goblin. So he's the biggest narcissist ever. They, he's just, yeah. Like, he's crazy. And, but he's like, I think I, I, think I got it under, under control. Because I'm Tony Stark. I'm Tony Stark, and I believe in myself really, really hard. I'll just build something. Yeah, he builds goblin iron arm. Yeah, is it green? Of course, of course. It looks like a goblin. He's like he's the Iron Goblin, and it's friggin' hilarious. Like it's just Gage having a blast. It looks fun. It's really great. Uh, if you want to watch, just like oh, and there's a last page reveal. It's like dun dun dun. I saw that coming. Um, but who cares? Because you want to see it. You want to know what's gonna happen next. So a lot of cool stuff. It's basically like a zombie outbreak comic, but like instead of zombies, it's spider guys. That's cool. And you can undo it. You know, like yeah, you, yeah, yeah. you don't have to kill everyone. Well, right. see, but at the same time, like it's it's easier to do that than to get through that when yeah. you know they can't be. Yes. Undone. The other problem, <laughs> yeah, but, but Bendis would say just kill them all. Oh yeah, no, no question. Uh, so yeah, it's a fun book. You should totally check it out if you like Spider Man or if you like the Venom, like especially Agent <laughs> Venom. You know, this is for you because it's Agent Venom being in charge. If you like the Venom, if you like the Venom, then you're gonna oh, yeah. get infected you're gonna get with Spider Man too. <laughs> Now, maybe they might come together and, like, work their differences out, but Hickman has them fight until the world ends, so probably not. Because at the end of, like, at the beginning of Secret Wars, you notice that, like, in Secret Wars number one, when everyone's, like, fighting and dying, Captain America and Iron Man are nowhere to be seen. It's because, like, Iron Man and Captain America are fighting each other. Like, they're just punching each other, because they just don't get it. And then the world ends. Which is, like, kind of a lesson, but it's also, like, cheapens the characters... But whatever. Anyway, there you go. Like in the end, they couldn't get past they, their own prejudices. They just couldn't get it past their own problems with each other. And like, you couldn't have thought of a bigger allegory or metaphor for this. For that, the one. world's about to end. I don't care. But I, I can't punch this guy. But I have to punch this one guy. 
fine. 